Hey, I'm CJ and welcome to my workshop. I'm super excited to be talking about the M4 Mac Mini today and we're primarily going to be looking at AI inferencing benchmarks. Um, though if you stick around to the end, I'll have maybe a little tip to make this machine even better than it is already. So um, with that said, I think what's really, really interesting is that it is an extremely powerful chip, or at least that's what we've seen um, from some of the benchmarks that are already out there today. And I want to dive deeper into specifically the AI workloads and what you get for this price and also uh, relatively how efficient it is. I think that's important. So if this is not a primary inferencing rig for you, but also just something that you can use as a daily driver, um, I think is really really interesting and then there's also projects like EXO where you can maybe string a few of them together to run larger language models um, just with some relatively inexpensive hardware. Whether that actually is practical or not is a different question but I think it's interesting to at least get a sense of what this little rig can do. So let's kind of just jump directly into it. We can take a look at large language models and here we're running Llama 3 8 billion and I think it's amazing to look at this chart and see that generational improvement from the M1 to the M4, uh, almost doubling its performance, 70% uplift, um, even a little bit over the M2, and almost near my M1 Pro. So this $500 computer competing with a computer from just a few years ago that cost five, six times the amount, it's pretty awesome. Um, and looking at this, you almost see this linear jump between the M1 and M1 Pro, where you almost doubled performance just by adding those extra eight GPU cores. Kind of wonder what the M4 Pro looks like here in terms of this as well. It's pretty interesting. So that's Llama 3 8 billion. I, let's also take a look at the time to first token. And this is representing how long it will actually take you to get a response from the large language model. And this is averaged over a bunch of different sized prompts and length of responses. So we have the M2 Max at 600 milliseconds, which I think is very reasonable. And then we have the M1 Pro and M4 just over a second until you start getting a response. And that is, that's all right, but it's not fantastic, I think. But also maybe shows that that M4 Pro is, is maybe gonna compete with that M2 Max. Um, but let's take a look at something smaller like Tiny Llama. And here we get down to 200 milliseconds in terms of response time, and that's extraordinarily reasonable. I think really excellent, almost imperceptible. And going back to generation time, or tokens per second rather, we see the M4 actually beating out the M1 Pro in this case, and we still see almost that doubling in performance from the M1 you know, probably about 20-ish percent over the M2. And it does make you wonder if this is just the increase in memory bandwidth rather than the GPU performance itself in this specific task as uh, the M2 had 100 gigabit gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth and the M4 has 120. So you kind of wonder whether that, that increase there is primarily from, from that. Um, let's keep moving on and let's move on to vision. And this is using Moondream 2, a tiny vision model. And I think overall we see very similar results. I don't think there's too much to talk about here. The only thing that I, I think is really important is time to first token. And we see a dramatic improvement over the M1 and M2. M2, for whatever reason, performed really badly. I actually took this benchmark multiple times to see if I could get that number down because it didn't make sense. But on whatever machine that was, the vision was not running very well. And for the M4, we see almost a second improvement and almost getting down to two seconds per image uh, or two seconds to their first token. So um, not, not too bad. And let's move on to hearing. And I, I am very curious about this one in particular because speech to text is one of those things that I wonder how it can affect how we use computers in the future. And I think we're gonna get continuously better at this and these computers are starting to get extremely good um, at this task in particular. So when we take a look at this, 
Um, this is the amount of speed up that we have. Actually, let's take a look at Whisper Large Turbo. This is the amount of speed up that we have over real time. So 16 times faster than real time. So if you put in uh, 16 seconds, you would have that computed in one second and you'd get your transcription. And again, just doubling in performance, generation over generation, competing with the M1 Pro, uh, pretty, pretty excellent results. And finally, let's take a look at diffusion. And this is how long um, it's taking to compute an image or make an image in the 1024 by 1024 pixel range. And this is in seconds, and this is really long. Um, the Macs are very not good at diffusion for whatever reason. I am not uh, super, I, I don't know, understand this one very much. I don't know if this is a PyTorch not being very optimized. These were all run in Comfy UI. I would assume something like stable diffusion.cpp maybe runs much, much faster or even stable diffusion in MLX. And that's something I would like to do in the future potentially is have a more consistent accelerated benchmark across all of, uh, all of the accelerators. And, but, but regardless, we see, you know, very impressive improvements, very much in line with kind of what we saw earlier, though, um, not entirely showing just purely memory bandwidth improvements here. I mean, we have a 40% increase, so it kind of seems like diffusion in this case is possibly compute bound. So very, very interesting results here. And when we take a look at uh, performance per watt, <laughs> you, you just see the M4 crushing it. Uh, and this is kind of across, across everything. And let's take a look at generation per watt. M4 is awesome. So wrapping up about the Mac Mini, I think it's really clear to see that um, it has excellent performance, especially relative to some of the older counterparts like the M1 Pro. And even the M1, it's showing almost two times the speed and almost competes with the M1 Pro. So really, really impressive performance in AI. And I'm very, very curious to see how the M1 or rather the M4 Pro and M4 Max perform as well. I don't think this is something that legitimately competes with the likes of NVIDIA um, in terms of raw performance. I think in terms of efficiency, it is totally there, but in terms of raw performance, it is not. Um, it'll be interesting to see if in future generations like M5 or M6, if Apple kind of continues to ramp this up, more memory bandwidth, um, you know, faster GPUs, more GPU cores, and how that'll go. I'm, I'm really, really curious to see, um, especially if they're taking Apple intelligence fairly seriously, or if they're going to continue to aim that at the like one to eight billion range, maybe where that three billion um, parameter model really shines. Be really interesting to see how that goes. But overall, really fantastic deal for $500, regardless of the AI performance. I think it's just uh, an excellent computer. I don't need to run benchmarks because you can kind of see from the AI performance um, what the overall is gonna probably be like for you. Um, it, it is massively performant and for $500, it's just incredible. But one of the biggest downsides to something like this is that the upgrade path for storage and memory is not very good. I think storage is really, really easily solvable and there's some like excellent options and that's exactly what I wanna show. Um, and that's these little USB-C NVMe drives. You fit an M.2 2230 SSD in this, and you can plug that just directly into the back of the Mac here. And this will sit perfectly flat on a desk and not be elevated at all. And this is a really, really amazing way to expand the storage and have it still be relatively quick. This is NVMe, so it is fast. Um, the problem with the small ones like this is that they can overheat. And if they do, the performance uh, will start to go down. You can get like a gigabit per second off of these. Um, and it may throttle down to 200 megabytes per second or megabits per second, which is still quite reasonable. Um, in fact, it might even be faster than the, those speeds, but you may roughly see something like that. But I think this is a really, really like compact way. It, I think this is just crazy because you can fit like four of these next to each other if you really wanted to, or three of these next to each other rather. And that's, you know, maybe six terabytes of storage or uh, 12 terabytes of storage or however much you really can fit in those 2230 SSDs. So uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of, 
maybe doing that for something like this. It's just so compact and I think really cool. So in conclusion, really wonderful computer um, for the price, can't beat it if you like Macs. I don't really know what else to say. Yeah, just hope you have a great time. Oh, also to mention that all, all of this has been sponsored by Mozilla. I'm doing some work and trying to make um, AI inferencing benchmark easier for everyone and make that um, open data that everyone can have access to. So uh, I will have more updates in the future about this project and trying to make that easier. And this is gonna be built on top of Llama file and Whisper file and some other work. So it'll be really interesting to see how this progresses and hopefully we can get some good overall AI scores for both efficiency and performance that the community can contribute to. So if you have any thoughts or any ideas about that, please leave comments. Um, it would be massively helpful to know what the community is looking for. And yeah, super excited to, to provide that.